So what's probably going to keep the honeymoon stage going on a little bit longer for Kamala Harris is that she has now picked her running mate. That's right. Her running mate. So let's go ahead and talk about who that is. So uh, first, I want to bring this up. Shout out to Hot Spot. Uh, breaking, Kamala Harris has officially selected Minnesota Governor Tim Waltz as her running mate. Okay, cool. Here's uh, Tim Waltz's mugshot from his DUI arrest in 2022. <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. I shouldn't be judging on that too much. But Tim Waltz, Tim Waltz is uh, is apparently the pick. So somewhere out there, Jake Uber is like, no. Somewhere out there, um, Josh Shapiro's like, I don't care. And somewhere out there, Isra- the, the Israeli uh, APAC babysitters are like, eh, we'll buy him off anyways. Because guess what? No one cares. But this will continue on the honeymoon phase for Kamala Harris because now there will be hype around. Well, who is Tim Waltz? Oh, my goodness. What an awesome pick. Kamala Harris and Tim Waltz. And like, hey, Bernie people, give it up already. All right. Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders campaign 2016 and 2020. I can, I can now say with absolute pride was a waste of time, waste of energy, waste of money. And he was never going to do a goddamn thing. He he was he was only in there for just the motion, the feeling. But here, I want to pull up this video here. Shout out to the uh, good people at Case Study QB. You know, Case Study QB, who's wrongly being censored. But here's 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 Morning Blow. Morning Blow. How do you feel at BSDNC? I can't even begin to to imagine what the business community is going to think about uh, a progressive uh, that's. Uh, that's the governor's I house. Can, uh, I can tell you I mean, already. I've been literally with Andrew. Yeah, go ahead. I'm literally texting with, with a number of CEOs right now, and not to say that uh, CEOs are an arbiter of anything. Did you hear that? There's more to this VP pick than anything else, but MSNBC, listen, listen. If you're going to portray yourselves as news, you know how you're speaking with all these CEOs. Are you ever going to hold these CEOs accountable for some of their corruption or abuse of power? Because because we know how you guys like to do puff pieces. Listen to that one more time. Because there's there's a lot in this video. It's only two minutes and 12 seconds. But a lot is being revealed. First of all, again, progressive, air quote. Are the Democrats progressive? No. Literally texting with, with a number of CEOs right now, and not to say that uh, CEOs are an arbiter of anything, uh, but the business community, as you just said, I think was um, hoping, uh, maybe hoping against hope, uh, that uh, the governor of Pennsylvania would be the vice presidential pick, and that was going to be a larger indicator or signal uh, about how Vice President Harris would govern as president, uh, potentially moving more towards the center as opposed to moving more towards the left. Uh, Clearly, uh, it appears at least that uh, this pick, at least in the the eyes of the business community, is a signal that, in fact, she may want to govern more uh, from a progressive left standpoint. You know, you talked about Shapiro, his stance on fracking, uh, for example, was something that... um, that the business community thought, okay, we can work with him. Um, and given where, given the sort of back and forth now of where Harris has been on fracking, that was going to ultimately help her. Um, I don't think we know enough exactly about uh, uh, this pick's uh, views on certain economic issues. He's a part of the Democratic Party. All this talk about Democrats being on the left or fighting for progressive policies. Listen, they don't do that. All right. Democrats don't know how to fight. Democrats know how to stall. They know how to beg for money and they know how to give nothing burgers and word salads. All in all, it's it is it is irrelevant. And this hype around Tim Waltz, what he's he's I swear to God, MSNBC, CNN, Fox News. This man is not Lenin. This man is not Stalin. He's not Chairman Mao. He's not Ho Chi Minh, okay? He's none of those people. He's a neoliberal corporate Democrat. And occasionally he might do one or two good things, but for the most part, again, irrelevant. I think you're going to see a lot of deep dives into tax policy uh, and other things that he's pursued. But clearly in this sort of, you know, what is centrist? 
what's more left. Uh, that is the view this morning, at least in, literally in the minutes yeah. that this has been uh, coming out. Well, as I've and, been looking, and, uh, working and, my fingers and on the phone here. Andrew. Yeah, and, and Andrew, politically, I mean, if you just, if you just followed what uh, what politicians have been saying in the Democratic Party, uh, he is a darling of progressives. He's a, a darling of the left. Did any of you get that memo? Any of you get that memo? Oh, oh, he's our darling. Oh, he's he's so lovely. When? Who? Bird goes tweet and Al goes who? What? Again, I I I try not to rage out too much. I mean, this election cycle it's giving me everything I want. It's entertaining and it's hilarious. But occasionally it is kind of sort of maybe stressing me out here. And they were lobbying very hard for for a a, a progressive ticket with progressive uh, in the number one and a progressive in the number two slot. That's exactly what they get. Let's now go. First of all, breaking news. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. This is why I love my audience. Thank you for the super chat. I, I hope you're not lying here because that would. But hold on. So good friend of the show, and I, I like how there's a breaking news just, just right above Aspen Fallen's uh, uh, super chat right here. Thank you for the $5 generosity. We do appreciate it. Feels like bizarro world. Waltz was my teacher at my high school when I attended. I didn't think he was nearly popular enough to be a contender for VP. Just wow. Small world, ain't it, Aspen Fallen? It's a huge, crazy world, but sometimes... Sometimes this this world we call Earth can be very, very, very small. But I just want to let you all know that this is all breaking because actually, folks, wasn't too long ago in this segment right here, in this little segment right here, that uh, <clears throat> which actually happened right before this breaking news. Morning Blow was t saying this about Tim Maltz. I agree with um, uh, what everybody's been saying, that he is more of a progressive than, than Governor Shapiro. Um, I still wouldn't rule out Governor Shapiro being chosen, by the way. And I don't think um, I don't think the left have called him correctly. I think it's absolutely right that his views on Israel and Netanyahu are well within the democratic mainstream. And indeed, if Kamala Harris wanted to be tough on on netanyahu uh, after being elected president having a vice president like shapiro would would give her a lot of cover to do that this um, and again this segment came out before the announcement that kamala picked her vp okay there's a reason why i did this because listen very carefully just how corporate media trips on its own cock um but if it is indeed um tim waltz sure he's progressive yeah He's he's Minnesota sort of social democrat, right. if you like. Um, yeah. But well, he doesn't sound progressive. I mean, well, the way yeah. he talks doesn't sound Berkeley at all. Uh, it's it's a much more sort of um, uh, down to earth, what we used to call folksy uh, sort of language folksy. that he uses. Um, that I think. So, you know, uh, hey, Ed, let, let, we'll, let, we'll, let, we'll, I mean, let's now, interrupt you really quickly, and you can continue. A couple of news organizations confirming it, yeah. including the AP. Yeah. Breaking news: Kamala Harris picks Minnesota Governor Tim Walz as running mate as she looks to boost the Democratic ticket in the Midwest. For our viewers, I was going to yeah. say to Ed's point, he sounds like you know, a football coach <laughs> talking about very progressive issues. He does have, he brings to the table um, a, a background that is very down to earth and connected with people and their daily lives as a former teacher. You know, it's an interesting pick. Uh, you know, I think ironically enough, people have looked at him as the safe pick. I would disagree. Uh, this opens up a, 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 a number of issues. Uh, for the Democratic ticket to now defend. Um, uh, but but this is, it, it looks like, according to the Associated Press, and we're still waiting at NBC News to confirm it, but the Associated Press 
uh, and other news organizations uh, Ed, have in fact said it's Waltz. Uh, what, what, what are your thoughts? Tim Waltz. Okay. So now that he's been selected, now that he is the guy, does this boost up Kamala Harris's numbers? No, not really, because the office of vice president doesn't mean anything. Because when we go to the DNC convention, now, now it's quite clear that Kamala's going to get selected. She's going to have the crown put upon her head, and that's it. And this is going to look like a safe pick, because now, hey, there might actually might be someone with a functioning brain in a potential Kamala Harris administration. But I don't want to stretch too far because, again, what's going to matter is voter turnout. Does it bring out enthusiasm? Let's look at his record. Let's look at where he said. And by the way, folks, as a governor, as a candidate, Tim Waltz, let's just look at uh, just what he represents. After, after all, he is he is he is running for this uh, high office now. And now he's the VP pick. Uh, just let's find out, uh, what he's all about. What is he all about? So, uh, let me go and pull up this article here for from the Hill, because after all folks, this is all breaking news by the way, but let's just look at this article from the Hill. Let me pause this right here. So as vice president, uh, Harris weighs her choice for running mate. house Democrats are increasingly advocating for a former colleague, Minnesota governor, Tim Waltz. First elected to Congress in 2006, Waltz served in the House for 12 years and rose to become the top Democrat on the powerful Veterans Affairs Committee before heading home in 2019 to lead the North Star State. My goodness, the amiable Waltz was not the was not only popular on Capitol Hill, but he also had a distinction of being the highest ranking enlisted soldier in the history of Congress, a status that endeared, uh, endeared him to Pentagon supporters in both parties. You see? You see there, there's no fundamental difference. He gets along with everyone in Congress. The lobby groups know him. The APAC babysitters probably know him. They all know him, and he's a good colleague. He gets along with Democrat politicians and Republican politicians and, more importantly, donors. But according to BSDNC, he's the darling of the left. Boy, Bernie Sanders, Bernie Sanders, what's it like to be the dud? That unique resume, combined with Midwestern roots, liberal policy record, and fierce defense of the Biden administration on the campaign trail this year, have made him a top prospect among a growing list of Democrats on Capitol Hill, who say he'd be a strong asset to the Democratic ticket as Harris vies to keep former President Trump from a second term in the White House. My sentiment uh, favor is uh, Tim Waltz, said Representative Jim McGovern, the top Democrat on the Powerful Rules Committee. He was a great member of Congress. The people I know in Minnesota tell me he's a great governor. But more importantly, he's a good guy. He's down to earth. He's the real deal. He, there's nothing phony about him. He calls him as he sees him and tells him like it is. And I appreciate the candor. And, if, hey, here's, here's how you know he's full-on Democrat. Represent Pramila Jayapal, the head of the Congressional Progressive Caucus, also uh, singled out Walt as a particular appealing vice presidential pick. She pointed to Walt's track record backing labor unions and working families as a key reason for her support. I want somebody who's really strongly pro-labor and understands labor because it's a big part of the working class agenda and making sure we win working class votes. Isn't that fantastic? So see? They all look and even Nancy, Nancy Pelosi appears to be leaning in Walt's favor. A source fam, uh, familiar with the California Democrats thinking told the Hill she is always especially fond of a former house of house colleagues when asked about Harris's running mate and a nod to Walt's. Isn't that special? This is where we're at. But hey, you if, if you guys if you guys want to see kiss ass behavior, if you want to see somebody try and make themselves relevant. Remember this, uh, remember this goofy? It's Waltz, baby, let's go! High school teachers stand up, public education stand up, educators stand up, young people stand up. Oh, God, you let yourself go badly. Jamal Bowman, what happened to that fresh, clean look, man? What happened, man? Working class people stand up. It's Waltz, baby, let's go! Tim Waltz in the building! Time to win in November, y'all. Let's go. All hands on deck. No staying at home. Let's go. This is rather pathetic and sad. All right. The only reason why I brought that up here is so we can laugh. Because 
that's the face of somebody who is still desperately trying to keep themselves relevant. Desperately trying to show people that, hey, I'm still here, everybody. Remember me? Ah, oh, I bet he's had a rough summer. Horrible. Oh, by the way, I paused at the wrong time, too. <laughs> <laughs> so there here here here's 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 Kamala Harris's uh running mate Tim Waltz. Tim Waltz is 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 her guy. That's 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 the dude that's going to carry the Democrats and Kamala Harris's ticket to victory apparently. But what kind of victory are we looking at? Because folks, we're going to go in deeper on this one. No pun intended. But uh, here's Kamala Harris, her website. Ah, they updated it. Real time, they updated it. Harris waltz for the win. Uh, oh, whoa, excuse me. Oh, we can't even go to the store anymore? Folks. They might actually put in some policies pretty soon. But right now, it's still money. So everyone sees this right now. Right now. Now, again, this, this will probably update sometime later today. I'm willing to bet it. I'm willing to bet sometime later today, later today, the campaign website for Kamala Harris will change. But you, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be a jerk here. I'm, I'm going to be real mean. The Harris Waltz. Come on, do the waltz. Come on, Harris, do the waltz, right? I, I, I could see them doing something cringe like that, some sort of cringe dancing, but they're already asking for money. Real time. Real time. Uh, and hold up. Wait a minute. $25, $47, $100, $250, $5,000. Hold on, I can't, I can't, I can't be this nuts, can I? Am, okay, continue to KamalaHarris.com. All right, hang on, wait. They just kind of fixed this here. Okay, hold on. All right, so nothing for policy yet. Meet Tim Waltz. That's it. Okay, so they added in Tim Waltz. They added in his name. But nothing about policy. Okay. Democrats still asking for money. Just like that guy at the gas station store. Hey, give me some money. 